Hello and welcome back to Crime and Justice. Today we're looking at police interviews with the security guard at the complex where Madeline Soto lived, the grandmother, and I believe it's the grandfather and aunt. So let's get on with it. So sit down, get your coffee and book. Today, February 18th, time is 18.30 hours, case number 24-011313, and we are here with Alex. How do you say your last name, Alex? Procise Motor. Okay. Um, do you, you were working on Monday, the 26th? Before we go any further, I'd just like to credit this to Grizzly Two Crimes. I have put the link before i will put it again if you haven't already please go and subscribe she does some brilliant work she really does so please go and subscribe if you haven't already okay um do you remember a resident coming through in a silver um lincoln sedan uh, I do remember, but not his face. I talked to him, and he's like, hey, man, I'm clicking. It's not working. And then I went, and I clicked the button. He went, like, he went inside. And I just remember there was a woman, like, sleeping mm -hmm. beside him with a, a green shirt. A green like shirt. That. Okay. Do you remember what time that was around? In the morning. In the morning. Okay. What time do you get to work? What time does your shift start? Six to two. Six to two. Okay. If you had to give a ballpark of what time it was. Not really. Okay. Have you <laughs> seen him before? No. No? What about her? No, because I don't remember his face. So. Okay. But so he pulled up because I know you have a resident lane and then like the guest lane. Yeah. He was like. Crazy. So he was in the, which lane? The, the resident. Like, okay. And he had a clicker yeah, with him yeah. and he's like, hey, it's not, yeah. it's not working. Okay. Did you get a good look at the girl at all? No. Well, they had your right or gender race, no. anything like that? No? no. Okay. But you said she was wearing something green. Yeah. And she was like apparently sleeping, like kind of like this. Okay. That's... Did she say anything? No. No? Okay. And he didn't say anything else? No. Did he seem to be acting normal or did he seem nervous at all? No, normal. Normal? Was, yeah, I didn't notice, like, I was even with a car here on the cone and I went there, but he was normal. He just like, hey, my clicker's not working. I'm like, cool. Okay. Did you remember, did you see the car again that day? No. No. When you walked up to the car, was did you walk up to the driver's side of the car or the passenger side of the car? The driver. So which direction was her face? Like to the other side. So she was facing like the like passenger, the window, yeah. passenger window, so her head was turned away from you. Mm -hmm. Like this. Could you see her hair? Did she have any like blanket or anything on her? I saw her. No, she didn't have a blanket. She had just like her hair, like this. Okay. So covering like maybe yeah. half of her face? Yeah. Okay. Like, I, I couldn't see her face. It was just, like, turning with the hair like this. Did you see her move at all? No. Okay, so she was just still. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she was just still. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. I've been a at um, 18.41 hours. Okay. Um, case number 24-011313. Alex, um, in regards to our last interview, could you raise your right hand for me? Like this. Like this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> do you swear to affirm that everything you told me today is the truth? Yes. Or do you testify to it in court if you ever had to? Yes. Okay. Uh, Tuesday, February 20th. Okay. Right. So that was the security guard at the gate of the complex where they lived. As you heard, he can't be sure of the time. He just knows it was in the morning. But he remembers seeing someone in the front passenger seat, but couldn't see her face because her head was faced away towards the passenger side door and her hair was over the face.
but he remembers a green top. How? This guy. Oh, my God. He kills a young girl. He murders her. Drives around with her. Then goes back to the complex with her. And then drives, leaves the complex and goes wherever. This is one sick guy. He's got some nerve going back to that complex with her sitting in that car unalived. I feel sorry for this security guy now. Because after he probably found that out, he's thinking, oh my God, that young girl was not alive. Oh God. It would make me my stomach churn if, if that had been me, knowing that. You know what I mean? Anyway, that was only a short interview. Because, really, what can you tell them? Right? He only had interaction with him for a few minutes, so it's not as if he can say, wow, well, I see him going in and going into the house and then leaving and then coming. You know what I mean? He can't go into all that detail. He can only say what he saw in those few minutes of interaction that he had with Stephen Stearns. So it's not going to be a long interview. But he will be giving testimony if needed in the trial. Right? Now I believe it's the grandma and her name is Yolanda Zambrano. Oh, and before we go any further... There's a lie straight away in that interview. Stefan said he forgot the clicker. Yep. And that he used some sort of ever pass or something to get in. But the security guard said he saw him clicking and he said, apparently Stefan Stern said the clicker wasn't working. So there's a lie by Stephen Stearns, straight away. Detective Hunt for OCSO case 24-011313. Uh, can you state your full name? Yeah. What's your relationship? Um, and so, do you recall the last time you spoke? No, his son. So remember when this time you saw her too? Got it. And so, I won't keep you too long, but it's my... Right, when the video audio goes silent, that's where the police have redacted the video. My understanding that it's not uncommon from school to here sometimes. She she uh, she did it like a few times. Okay. Yeah. And is that normally like when she's waiting for her to pick her up or? Uh, yeah. Um, sometimes the office and pick her up. Mm -hmm. She walks from school to here. Okay. She did it like um, maybe. I don't know, five, six times. Okay. So just a few times she's done just that. So that's why Jennifer would have come here yesterday to see if she had maybe, yes, maybe, maybe she come here. here yeah. Okay. Um, do you remember what Jennifer told you yesterday? No, she's like, waiting here at school, but she doesn't come out. She's not, I don't, I don't think she's here. Maybe she. So Magdalene had only walked to the grandmother's a few times after school. But what gets me is, in one of the interviews, Jane says, states how sometimes the grandfather would pick her up from school and he'd wait in the car park of the church. Right? So, wouldn't you be thinking, go and check in the car park first, if she's not there, and then... Go to your mother's. It's just her, this is her way of thinking, but it's wrong. This is a, a story. This is, because she was at the school at about 3 p.m. The school finishes at 4 p.m. I will be getting out the car, going into the school and seeing where my daughter was. You know what I mean? Perhaps she was being talking to friends somewhere or something else. Or maybe she joined an, an after-school club and 
hadn't told her mother. You know, anything like that. So, because they said she was forgetful, so she could have joined an after school club and not told her mother. And, but she doesn't go into the school. Now, this is at 10 past four. What does she do? Oh, because the cars are behind her and they've got kids in the car, she pulls away and goes to her mum. What on earth? Before you leave that complex, you check everything there first. You check the school, you check the grounds, you check everywhere. And then when you've covered that and she's not there, I wouldn't be going to my mother's. I'd be phoning my mother's and say, say has Magdalene come over there? Walked over to yours. No. Okay. So she's not at school. She's not at yours. I'll be phoning my grand, my father. Has, did you pick Magdalene up to, from school today? No. So I'll be going, right. She's not at my mother's. My, grandfa- my father didn't pick her up. Um, She's not in the school. She's not in the school area, grounds. Right, I'm phoning the police. And I'd have had all that done by about half four. But she wastes time by going to her mother's, then sitting in the road where Madeline would normally walk along, then going back to her mother's, and then texting friends, then emailing teachers. So it's about quarter to four, quarter to four, five o'clock ish, before she got any reply from them. Right? And then went back to the school to find it closed. Uh, you was already there at ten past four, so why didn't you go in then? You walk to school, to, to the office. And I was like, okay, I'll wait here. Mm-hmm. It was 4.30, 4.35, 4.40, and she never showed up. Okay. So, and we went together to school. But the office were closed. Mm-hmm. It was only the, like the after program, they were open. Mm-hmm. So we went to a verify. Did she tell you who took her to school yesterday? Okay. Came here to, I don't even know, I guess for... Gotcha. No. Gotcha. He just came. Does he... I guess he just came to visit. Got it. Yeah. When did... I'm not sure, but I know he moved back in December to Punta Gorda, mm-hmm. he moved out, out of the house. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it, as far as you know, it's because they... As far as I know, I don't know. Got it. Okay. Well, I guess that makes sense. Um, but he came back this weekend, maybe he for... Her, just, for I, guess... It, uh, I guess, is it common of Stefan? I guess sometimes he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got it. Um, and did he say where he dropped her off at at all? He said he dropped her off in the corner of Urbana. There is a building there. It's called Urbana. Urbana? Urbana. 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 It's towns, Town Loop, and I don't even know the name of the street. Okay. By Urbana. I was right in the corner. Got it. So he dropped her off there, and then did he say what happened after? He said that he just walked, like, going to school, mm-hmm. and then she stopped for a few seconds. I guess she was looking for her phone. Yeah. And then he just kept going. Okay. Um, run away before or ever wanted to go somewhere else or hang out with her friends without permission no. or anything? No, not that I know. Okay. Um, is there anywhere you know of that she likes to hang out or, or go to to clear her head if she's ever upset or a place that she likes to go? One day she was upset. I guess she had a fight. And she called me crying. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm walking around the neighborhood. I was like, why are you doing that? She's like, I don't want to be in my house right now because I am mad. I'm like, you know what? Go back to you, to the house. Don't walk alone in the street. And she said, okay. So she went back. That's the only thing I knew. It happens. That was, I think, like a year ago. That happened like a year ago. Okay. And then after that, I don't know. Got it. Okay. Um do you have any concerns with, I, I just ask this because I have to, do you have any concerns about either Jennifer or Stefan with ever raised alarm with you that you can remember? 
I never liked him. Don't ask me why, because I don't even know myself. It's because I guess he doesn't work, he doesn't do anything. I mean, he just there because he suffers from a lot of things. Okay. So even Jen's mom didn't like him, right? Now, if you go and listen to the three videos I've done on the interview with his parents, they're like, we, they didn't like Jen, right? And so it's a bit of back and forth between both sides. One side didn't like him, one side didn't like Jen. I think they made the perfect pair because they fed off each other. They fed off each other. So she had the daughter. She wasn't giving out, so she said in to the parents one day, to the father, to Stefan's father. So I'm wondering, was she jealous of Madeline? I've said this before. I'm wondering if she was jealous of Madeline. But she was giving in the green light to go ahead and go and sleep in the same room as my daughter. But my her daughter didn't have a room. Her daughter's room was a little section off the dining room from the living room. You know what I mean? It was... For a 13-year-old, that is not ideal. A 13-year-old child, be it a boy or girl, needs some privacy, needs a room where they can shut the door on the outside world, shut the door with whatever's going on in the house or what outside. They need that space. They need that time. And poor Madeline had nothing. And I... I mean, he doesn't do anything, he doesn't work, he doesn't help you. Something that is not my life, but I just ask her, you know, that okay. was her answer. Got it. <laughs> so typically, did you or anything from the phone? No, no. Not much? Not much. Do you remember the last time you spoke with her before Sunday? So, as we know, his parents said he didn't do nothing for them. He didn't do nothing around the house. Whereas he stated, oh, he, he went back and forth between his mum's house and Jen's house because his mum and dad were getting old. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Getting old and they needed help around the house and with the dogs where he did nothing. He... He literally sponged off his parents. Then when he goes, like when he went back in the, the the last time he was there, before Madeline died, right? Jen even paid for him to get down there. Paid, gave him money for whatever. You know what I mean? He didn't contribute to that house at all. His parents used to pay the £600 a month for the room upstairs, room number four. But they stopped doing that <coughs> in the November of 2023. And to be honest, when you listen to that interview by the parents, the last time they saw Madeline was early 2023. So it's a good year since they've last seen her. So in that year, they were saying how she was... She she would come up and give him a hug and say good night and all this stuff for going to bed at their house. But a lot can change in a year, right? Bearing in mind she'd have been what eleven, twelve when they last saw her. Probably twelve, maybe when they last saw her. So in a year, a lot can change. She used to say to a counsellor she went to that she found him weird and when asked why, they go, she go, because he, he did nothing, he just, he was just there. He was just there. And if you watch the videos of the police cam videos footage, right, he's just there. 
It's not sitting with the family or talking to others. When the police are there, he's there. When that phone call comes through on that footage of the police camp, where it was the head, head teacher, the headmaster of the school, his face, it was like, who's that she talked to? And he had this concerned look on his face. When he realised who it was, did you see, if you've not seen it, please go and watch it, did you see that whew, sigh of relief when you realised who it was? I'm sure the police saw that as well. But it's just there. Poor Maggie. Well, I spoke to her uh, Friday. Friday, because she slept over my house. Okay. Day, uh, I came here to work. And after here, I was going to the party. Gotcha. And I told my husband to going to take her and she started crying she said no she doesn't want to go so um, she didn't go at all uh so my ex-husband went mm. to pick her up okay and cool. or does your ex-husband ever pick her up from school mm, yeah yeah I, I don't know about my ex-husband but uh when i have to i'll go and pick her up if not uh, leticia and saying. when you pick her up right so maggie was at her grandmother's on friday she was going to take her home on a Saturday, but Maggie was so upset, crying and whatever, that she didn't want to go home. So her ex-husband, which would be grand Maggie's grandfather, Jane's father, picked, uh, she went there and spent the day with them. Right? Yeah. The parents, his parents said, I'm sure they said that Maggie phoned Stefan on the Saturday. I'm going to have to listen to that again. Maggie phoned Stefan on the Saturday just to make sure he's coming to the party on the Sunday. And then it was a little while after that phone call that or message, whatever it was, phone call or message, that on the evening, Stefan, Saturday evening, Stefan was having an anxiety attack and asked his father if he had any medication, which he didn't. But then he found some. And his father couldn't understand, didn't know what had brought this anxiety attack on. It wasn't like he was scared or anything. It was just something were bothering him. So, was it Maggie sent him a message on Saturday? Or phoned him, and if she did, what did she say to him? I don't think it had anything about the party. I don't think it had anything to do with the party. Because Maggie didn't want to go home on the Saturday because she thought Stefan was coming over on the Saturday. She didn't want to go home. Why? Was it because she thought Stefan was going to be there? Why? Why? Um, so why would she be making a phone call to him, asking him if he was coming to the party, when she knows the family don't like him? The family wouldn't want him there. So it's all a bit here and there, you know what I mean? You're hearing one, one side of the family saying one thing and then you hear this side, uh, the mother's side of the family saying something else and you're thinking, well, none of the family have got any reason to lie. You know what I mean? What have they got to lie about? And I'm wondering, because I found that interview with the parents his parents, very interesting. And I will go over that again because I'm sure they said Maggie phoned him or texted him on the Saturday just to get confirmation who's coming to the party on the Sunday or something like that. So, I don't know. I'd have to look over that. If anyone has watched those any of those videos, 
let me know in the comments if you heard what I heard, or was it something else? Where does, uh, typically, where do you pick her up Just from? from the school. From the school. Yeah, from Have you ever picked her up from, like, anywhere else far church. from the school? Church. Like church? Because, yeah, like from the church. Is that somewhere that she hangs out or other kids no, hang out? Or? No. There's a lot of kids there at that time. Oh, they kind of go there? Yeah, a lot of kids go there. The parents will pick them up from the church. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Um, okay. What's a good phone number for you? Oh, that's fine. How do you spell your name? Y-O-L A-N-D-A uh -huh. And your last name? Zambra. Z as in zebra. Uh -huh. A-M-B-R-A-N-O And what's your birthday? 929-67 can... And you do have a Florida ID. I can yes. look up with that. Yes. Okay, cool. Um... Okay. Um, well, is there anything else important that you think I should know? Yeah, my brother-in-law, he went, he woke up this morning, mm -hmm. he went to look at the trail, mm -hmm. and he was walking, and and he passed by 417 under, mm -hmm. and she, he found the wallet. I have it. When you say the trail, what trail? It's like in the back of the school, there is a trail. Oh, there's a trail behind yeah, the school? behind the school, yeah. Okay, and he found a wallet. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. And if you want to come in and look yeah. at what you found, and uh -huh. he just gave it. Right, so that was the end of the interview there. But if you notice, right, the grandmother was t he was going back inside or whatever to get this wallet that the uncle had found. Jen, when she spoke to this detective, right, said that you now when she was speaking to the sex crime unit detective she asked her about had she been anywhere had her phone been anywhere else apart from here and whatever and jen said no and she said have you been to your mom's office place of work and she went today and she went no and then she said oh but the detective had madeline's phone he went there to mom and the detective goes, why Why did you go there? And she said, because my uncle had found a wallet. Now, I think this is the interview. With the family member, which I believe is the grandfather and the aunt. So we'll listen to that. Is it a, a, could you take it out for me? I don't want to take your whole wallet. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, You guys from here, or did you just hear about it and come over? Um, we live five minutes. We live right here. Oh, okay. I'm staying real far. And I just, I just yesterday we were, we were printing flyers, we were passing them out. I want to pull you guys into the shade. Do you have a handicap tag? No. Okay, you want to move it? Just so, I don't want anybody to come out that needs it, sure. and you know, we're blocking that. I feel sorry for the, grand, the grandfather. I really do. I feel sorry for all the family members, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not saying
comment come up on Grizzly True Crime's channel. And it said, why couldn't Maddie go to her room? Maddie didn't have a room. Maddie had this little area off the section of area. Right? In the living room come dining room. The bed, there were three bedrooms upstairs. Two roommates took two of the rooms. They were paying for those two rooms. And the bedroom number four was Stefan's room. But Stefan moved out in November 2023 because his father said he wasn't going to keep paying £600 for him to be there for that room. We couldn't afford it, right, I suppose. So, at the end of November, Stefan moved out and moved back to his mum and dad. So, why couldn't Maggie, why could, he not, why could she not have moved all his stuff out of there, everything, and put it in that area with was sectioned up from Maggie and put Maggie up in that room. No, she still kept all his stuff up there, his gun, his camera stand, his vile stuff up in there. Right? And poor Maggie had a section in the living room. No wonder she didn't like sleeping on her own. She was in a living room where everyone could see and hit, see her and whatever. Poor girl. We're still wait for this interview to start with the family. Sorry, still a little bit forward. At the beginning, there is a lot of wind, but you hear it more at the beginning of this interview. As the interview goes on, I don't know if they go to an area where the, the wind wasn't blowing so much, but it seems to hear it better as the interview goes on. <laughs> Aside from Jen and your mom, have you talked to anybody else? No. no. Our families were, you know, we're seeing things all the oh, time. Yeah, we have we're, family we're, we're sending out the information that we have that we know. Like, we didn't know any charges for her. Do you have any cousins or anything that she's close with? Yeah, or? we have a lot of cousins, but we reached out again, nothing. I haven't heard of yeah. them. Do you guys know of any boyfriends, anything like that, girlfriends? As far as we know, no. Okay. Um, she was gaining some tools oh, that's detective about... Yeah. We told her about like her Roblox. Um, right. I think she has Instagram. Okay, so, so you guys have spoken stuff. with a detective? Um, very, very little, but yes. Okay. She was trying to reach somebody, and uh, who did you call? Um, Detective form? Hunt. Okay, gotcha. Just see, we just want to be kept informed. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. We haven't like, like heard anything. Uh, like in yeah. two days, it's been nothing. Yeah, we are working on a lot of stuff. We we don't talk about the process. Yeah. Um, and I know I know that that's annoying, but we have reasons for that, and yes. we we want to make sure that um, we do everything a hundred percent right the whole time. Um, uh, here's my business card. We are going to be here for a little bit. Um, we can't really provide you with more information, but by all means, if you guys come up with anything that you want us no, to know, of course, yeah. of um, email is probably best because the other phone number, the other number is a desk phone, and obviously okay. we're not there. But if you shoot me an email, um, it'll come to this phone, and I can check it. Okay. Being on, unfortunately, it's not up to us, right? Like yeah. if we, if if we could, we would put one out for everybody because we get a lot of help that of way. Course. So. But it is work being worked on in the back end. But okay. by all means, if you guys want to so start a GoFundMe, you can. I, I will tell you this. Um, typically, if we can't stop you guys from doing anything like that, typically the more that stuff gets out into the media, the harder it makes it for us, right? Um, so, yeah, sometimes that's how it works. But by all means, uh, I, I can't tell you that. But I, I really can't. It's just... Um, 
what happens with the media sometimes is they put information they out there that's not this, accurate yeah, yeah, yeah. and that can sometimes hurt our investigation mm -hmm. but again I, I can't tell you you guys do what you feel need to you need to do as a family um, we're going to be doing everything on our end for you guys by all means communicate with us if you yeah. come up with anything um, like I said we'll be here for you for you hours you have um detective hunt's information you have my information and you can always just call the sheriff's office and say so I need to you can bug me every day you can bug me every day last question mm -hmm. this, this is what frustrates me eight hours it took us yes. eight hours for what the school didn't notify she never what is the procedure for yeah for so school? i'm not Which i'm not, not typically from what i know with orange county public schools and again I, I can't really speak on their procedures because we don't work for them um but it was my understanding that they typically send out like text to parents or something yes, at least so yeah I'm hey, not, kid, apparently the school didn't um uh, let jane know that maggie wasn't at school that day in the morning. Now, I know from previous experience, when my child has not been in school, right, if I've not been in touch with the school to let them know that she, they won't be in for whatever reason, they are phoning you by, what, half nine? Because our school starts at nine till half three. Well, in the well, it did when my kids were at school in the UK, but um, by half nine, they was phoning you because by then all the registrations had been handed in, right? And they would go through them all, and any child that was missing off that reg not clusters not attending, but they had no phone call off the parents, so they would be phoning the parents to find out where the child was. By half nine. Said she's sick. Yeah, that's something that's that that you should do, bring right? up to them. And I don't, I don't know if it's an automated system yes. or how that works and how the text messages go out or what Jen may have set up with them. Um, if it, like, I don't know if some people can choose email, some people choose phone calls, some people choose text. Um, but unfortunately, we can't speak on Orange County Public Schools. Yeah. I just know that typically, like I was just speaking that. to another parent reference a situation like this, and um, they got text messages. My, my thought process is eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. Georgia. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? But she's yeah. at the port. Right. Right. I, this is the way that I think. Yeah. Do you guys know anything she was, would have been upset about or anything? She was, she, was, she was. She had a great birthday. She, she was had a happy. Great birthday. Like she got a whole bunch of gifts. She yeah. had a lot of money. She didn't take any money with her. Right. She, like she if she was like, trying to run away. Yeah. We were, we were cleaning the the backyard. Yeah. Right. We were. Uh, I, I have a van that travel. It's right. right in front to check that already. Yeah. We were working on that. You know, doing little things in there. Yeah. And then uh, she helped me with the front yard cleaning up. You know, she's she's like that with me. You know, we yeah. do things. And then I took her to. Mm -hmm. For a whopper. That gets me. That one little section really gets me. Where he starts to choke up. Where he took it to Burger King. I can't eat whoppers. Right. I had a double whopper. <laughs> Fries. Such a fun night. Yeah, it was do, you, great. do you remember who was there at the party tonight? Uh, all our family, all our family here. Friends, friends from school. 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 Friends from school. school. They talked to that already. Um, so family, like, is you guys aunts, uncles, aunts, uncles, cousins. Um, she gets along with everybody. Yeah, yeah, and she yeah. and she had two friends at the party. Um, from school, right? From school, yeah. and they they were having a blast. They were outside. They went to the park. They came back. The party was here. No, it was no. at my mom's house in um, Orlando. Does she, did she go with? No, park. I took her and I dropped her off. Yeah, so I dropped problem, her off yeah. 8 30 one night. Uh, I told her, you know, she took the second meds, I said, take your meds, take a shower, I left. And then 10, 10 30 afterward. Oh, so she back here to, to meet her, or did she go to the party and meet her there? No, here. She got out at like 10. She had to ask her, but she said she got here around 10, 10 30. 
she's a little disabled, you know, yeah. like emotionally type of thing, but she can have a, a part time with yeah. Disney and all that stuff. She finally got another job with them because they, yeah. they're giving the run around. And we have to watch the baby, mm-hmm. you know, and she helps. You know, Stefan is the over to help her. Mm-hmm. She asked him to come and help her. Right. You know, these few days because she was in training and all that stuff, and it's six o'clock in the morning. It's tough. Well, she right. says that there was so that's some why days the reason that she was going to get out at one a.m. So she always why takes us to I'm going to write something on the back of the business card because um, while you guys can reach out to me, I'm going to give you the lead detective's information. Okay, um, but like I said, if you guys think of anything, please let us know. I told her, you know, she takes supplements. I said, take your meds, take a shower. I left. And then 10, 10 30 afterward. So she back here to, to meet her, or did she go to the party and meet her there? No, here. She got out at like 10, 10. She, I, she had to ask her, but she said she got here around 10, 10 30. She's with yeah. Disney and all that stuff. She finally got another job with them because they, yeah. they give them the run around. And we have to watch the baby, mm-hmm. you know, and she helps. You know, Stefan is the over to help her. Mm-hmm. She asked him to come and help her. Right. You know, these few days because she was in training and all that stuff. Yeah. And it's six o'clock in the morning. It's tough. And she right. says that there was so some days that she was going to get out at 1 a.m. So she always takes us to school. I'm going to write something on the back of the business card because um, while you guys can reach out to me, I'm going to give you the lead detective's information. Okay. Um, but... Like I said, if you guys think of anything, please let us know. Um, right now, we're we're just in the process of collecting as much information as we can. That's why we're here. We we're, we're working in other places as well. Um, yes, that was my next question. Like, if, I know you guys have to cross everything off, and that's mm-hmm. good. What about other other possibilities? Everything's there... being addressed. So uh, everything that we can possibly address at this time there's detectives all over the county and in other counties i mean this isn't good, actually good. even our county right now yeah, yeah. um so we have multiple multiple detectives um and law enforcement officers in general forensics investigators we're just trying to collect as much information as we can so by all means yeah, we, understand. Yeah, I, I, we just want to be kept yeah so i, I will say it's there is a it's just you might not be updated every single like five ten minutes but there's, no, a, there's a lot a I'm lot of effort I, hey, listen, I, I was with hunt yesterday and we've been out since yesterday at we i, I came out personally at 3 p.m and we're still out um, yeah. doing everything so and the other thing is is we we have to communicate we don't have the ability to call everybody yeah, to give them updates. Yeah. So whenever, what I always tell people is, I know you may not hear from us, but literally the second we get updates and information, we will reach out to them. Okay, cool. And then they can disseminate that information to you guys as they see fit. But unfortunately, we don't have the ability to call everybody and say, hey, this is yeah, what's yeah. going on, just because we can only speak. Okay. Yeah, I just know sometimes like I have to think about asking them, like, <laughs> questions and you guys can reach out with questions i'm just saying we will not be able to call you guys and give you updates we can only speak to so yeah um but if she has a question that she thinks of tell her not to hesitate to reach out to us and we we will answer when we're able to there are there are guidelines of when we can do certain things so but but we're with you guys and we're gonna do everything that we can uh, like yesterday we were out like members especially the ones that are closest with her know like hey the second you hear from her you need to let us know communicate that to detectives because at the end of the day our biggest concern is her safety right we don't care about anything else we don't care she could walk up to me right now and be like i robbed the store and i'll be like okay then stay here with them okay um what about like um I know you guys did like a search yesterday. What can we do like a search? Like would so, you it's best. That? Yeah. It, it's search best where? that you don't right now because we are continuing our search, and we don't. Um, it, I'm not saying you can't drive around to our favorite places and yeah. look if there's anything you think of like that. Yes, but as far as like I don't know, walking through woods or something like that, I would I would tell you not to do that because we are doing that. And we don't want anything to really be like contaminated yeah, or anything like that. Yeah. But by all means, if like I said, if you guys think of something that you think should be 
looked into, let us know, and of then course. we will prioritize based on the information that we get and see what what's best for us yeah. to do next. All right, good. But no, but no, you don't have different. to stop looking. I just don't. I don't think she ran away. Like I don't right. think she was. That's, right. that's, that eight-hour differential just kills me. Kills yeah, me. and and speak to the school. And do you guys have? Do there are there other juvenile kids in school within your family? Um, my daughter, but they go to separate schools. Um, yeah, and that's something that Jen may need to speak to the school and just be like, hey, in the future, you need, I, I need notification. I hope that I hope they're communicating to the other families too. You know, uh, the school. Yeah, I guess. Hey, listen, what's happening here? You got to be aware of what's happening around the neighborhood. Yeah, you know? I think the information is getting out. I mean, I we we've we've gotten contact that it, the information is spreading. So, okay, and, and we want that, right? We want as much help as we can get, but we don't want we don't want fake information out yeah. there, right? And, and, and that the overpass. Mm-hmm. I've been there. Okay, the traffic in the morning with the kids and parents. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I'm saying. Some yeah, active, we're looking into all of that. Yep. We're, we're doing everything that we can for you guys, and we'll be here with you guys the whole time, okay? Right. We appreciate you. Yeah, no we problem. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. You. Thank you. We're going to get back to it, and yeah. if you guys have anything, then please reach out, okay? We're only five yep. minutes, minutes away. She missed one. Minute. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Absolutely. Thank you Thanks so much. much. Good. But that's the end of the three interviews. There was another interview on that, but it was with the housemates, and it was very hard for me to hear what she was saying. But from what I understand is she didn't know that Stefan was staying there again. You know what I mean? A thing that was brought up was Jen. I think it may have been Jen who'd been on the call with uh, Stefan on the Saturday, not Maggie. Right? But Jen asked Stefan to come over so he could help with Maggie because she'd been doing these training days and uh, the hours were all over the place. Like she could be starting at 6 a.m. and finishing at 1 a.m. and things like that, right? Why did she need Stefan's help on the on the Monday for the Monday? She had the day off. Stefan didn't need to be there. But she asked him to come over. Why? So for Jen. Not to want to get up on the Monday morning. I wouldn't mind. She had a doctor's appointment. So she had to be up by nine anyway. So why couldn't she have just said nothing to Stefan? Why Why could she not? I just got up at like half seven, eight o'clock herself. Sorted the dogs out. Got Maggie ready for school. Put her in the car. Took her to school. Right? And then go to the doctors. Because there are doctor's appointments. I think she said 10.15. So she had plenty of time, even after dropping Maggie off at school, to get to the doctors. But I'd just like to say thank you to everyone for watching. Have a good day.